Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City. It's pretty funny saying this to the camera, to you, the viewers and subscribers for the very first time. But hi. I hope you've watched all the videos that I've posted so far on the channel. That's 122 videos so far and I can only assume that each and every one of you have watched each video 10 times already. So thank you for that. I'm doing this video in person because recently I hit 2,000 subscribers and I thought I'll do something different and maybe some subscribers and viewers might want to get to know me better but that's just an assumption. But in this video, I will share a bit about myself and it also lends itself to a new video series that I'll be doing for this channel. But first, I'd like to thank everyone who commented, uh, supported and gave input for my LEGO Ideas project. And that's of course this food street now known as Gastro Alley. Uh, since my last video update, I have made several changes and of course I'll do a proper video when I do the submission for this project. I haven't submitted it now, but once I do, I will let you know. But some of the major changes include, you know, changing the colours for the noodle store, make it more vibrant, changing the colour of the table, tiling it up. I have also taken out this back light row of tiles. Uh, so that this now can be a modular style display. You can set it in between buildings or next to a building. And I've also allowed it such that certain things such as the lampposts, the gas pipes, this particular build over here can be repositioned just due to the jumpers I've placed so that they'll fit in whether you are viewing this uh, long-wise or at the short end. So look out for this particular update uh, very soon. But thank you once again to everyone who gave their input. Uh, I can tell you it makes a big difference. And in a sense, you know, all of you you know, played a part and I really hope this does well on LEGO Ideas and maybe with enough votes uh, we can get this as a set and every one of you can build this as well. Now on to the rest of the video. In the LEGO world, you know that I run Small Brick City, a channel that explores LEGO City designing as well as mocks. But in the real world, professionally, I'm a live entertainer and a designer of specialised theatrical stage equipment. I've had only one job my entire adult life and that is I started out as a magician and then moved on to an illusionist as well as a designer for you know stage props and equipment and I've been doing this as I said all my life since I was a kid I've been doing magic uh, through school as well as through the army because I spent two and a half years in national service and then through university I actually started my company or production company in university but basically I've been doing magic and illusion my entire life the genre of magic I do now is in the field of Grand Illusion. That's the big spectacular stuff, I guess you call it. But it's the big illusions where you make people disappear, float them, cut them in half and stuff like that. So that's my main genre of magic and I perform across the world, mainly in Asia Pacific, Middle East and Europe. And I do corporate and special events, headline cruise liners and do TV as well. In fact, next month I will be filming an appearance on TV in Singapore and I'll tell you a bit more about that next month. I'll bring along my LEGO sick fix so it's related to LEGO. Besides performing, I also design original stage magic and illusions. I've designed illusions and magic that are used by magicians all across the world, including well-known magicians. You'd see a lot of my props also shown on a lot of the Got Talent shows all across the world. I've written many books, almost a dozen or over a dozen books actually. And these include books on stage illusions, so there are blueprints in the books. It tells people how it's done and how to build the props. But this is by and large only for the professional magic community. I've also written books on you know, how to be an illusionist, uh, original you know, work on uh, the kab Kabuki Drop, which is a theatrical curtain system. Again, only relevant if you're in the field. Uh, and you know, a book on the business of life entertainment. So I've written a whole bunch of books. So a lot of my work is not just on stage, but is off stage creating, designing and writing, uh, which is why I also wrote uh, a Lego book, uh, Bricks for Small Places. And a lot of my thoughts of designing, uh, you know, not just magic, but my process of designing and creating is encompassed in this book, which I apply to Lego as well. I tell you all this really uh, not to bore you because I think some of you might find this interesting but also I'm going to do a series of videos to show you my thought process and telling you my background probably explains why I design my mocks and my Lego cities the way I do. You see, 
I see magic like any art form or entertainment form as a story. It's about telling a story. We are storytellers regardless of our medium or regardless of our platform. And I see Lego the exact same way. I see Lego or specifically Lego scenes or displays and cities as you know, a way of telling a story. And that's why I always ensure that my Lego city tells a story in some way. Sure, the different scenes, you know, so individual stories, but I do want my whole city overall to tell a story as well. And that's why I come up with, you know, a backstory. I do world building for my Lego city. Seems a bit extreme, but I guess that's because of my, you know, professional background and just how I approach, you know, a lot of creative projects. So I always want to tell a story uh, with the scenes, with my builds. So there's always motivation in why I'm doing certain things. Nothing is generally random. Everything that I design, whether it's the small mocks or builds that I share in my tutorials or the Lego city itself, uh, there's a reason for everything. So I choose things for a reason, often to you know push a narrative or story forward or because I feel that my city lacks something or I feel that a build can communicate an aspect of the story more effectively. And as a creative individual, so I'm always you know, looking to do some things different. So in magic, I often push the envelope by doing innovative styles of magic, uh, doing different things. And same thing for Lego. I don't just like to uh, rehash or reinvent the wheel. I try to add my own touch, my own ideas, and even to create new builds. And I guess part of my design background or experience does help in designing certain elements in Lego. So I have a small advantage there. Uh, but that's why my builds and mocks are the way they are. The art of magic also relies on the element of surprise. And that's inherent of magic, right? So if I have a Lego brick here and you expect to see something with it, you don't expect to see it disappear. Now that's a surprise. And that's part of entertainment, that's part of storytelling, that's intriguing, that makes you go wow, that makes you think. And that's the great thing about magic compared to any other art form. You can appreciate all arts, you can be entertained, you can be amused, you can be inspired, but magic is the only one which also makes you go, wow, how did he do that? How was that done? It's a thinking art, I like to say. But surprises, it is the cornerstone of magic, and I also try to put it into my Lego designs work and my videos as well. So I always want to surprise you, the viewers, the subscribers, by doing different things all the time. Hopefully, when you come to my channel, you always have this kind of thinking in the back of your head, well, what's he coming up next? What am I going to see today? Oh, I didn't expect that, that's different. Now, if you go through these thought processes, I feel I've done my job because uh, I know, even just as a, you know, as a user of, or consumer of content myself, I want to be surprised. Sometimes, if you see the same kind of thing over and over again, even if you do like the channel or the personality behind the channel, it can get a bit mundane or dry or boring at times. So I do try to mix things up and I do try to surprise you and I hope I've done that. In upcoming videos, I'll share with you my experience in magic and show production and how I relate it to Lego designing, mock building and planning Lego cities and stories. If this is something you'd like to watch, please let me know in the comments because I only want to produce content that you want to see. But I guarantee you, this will be unique content because I have, I think, a unique perspective. Uh, probably the only one on YouTube who combines, you know, professional magic with Lego mock designing. Uh, unless there's another professional magician out there who likes Lego and does videos, in which case I'll kill him. So I'll still be the only one. So if you like this, uh, this content or this direction, of course, all my old or traditional videos will still remain. I'll still be producing this. Those, uh, this is new. So let me know if you like to see it. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. You know, the channel is growing and, you know, when you subscribe, it tells me that I'm producing content that you want to watch besides the comments. And I know, you know, I've got a great bunch of subscribers who always comment and always shows the support. But I also know there are lots of people who are watching and unsubscribing or uncommenting, and that's perfectly fine as well. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube channels that I may not necessarily subscribe or comment on, uh, but I still enjoy their content. But if you can hit that subscribe button, I'll appreciate it. And you know, before you go, check out these two videos that you might have missed. I'll talk to you soon.